eventually but we are blessed to be here this morning worshiping God so we just thank you for choosing our church to come and worship God uh, it's, it's just a great uh, and I want to tell you you don't want to miss what God's going to do through this church Amen. And, 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 and it's been prophesied so one thing about when, when you receive a prophecy not only do you have to claim it you have to start living it yeah. all right so before we, Linda and I came out here, I had three different prophets lay hands on me and they began to prophesy and they said that out of this church, we're gonna to touch the nations of the world. So that's what we're into and I believe that, I'm claiming that, I'm believing that we're going to somehow launch churches, not just nationally, but internationally. And, and I really believe that. So don't miss what God wants to do. Okay, I, I, this is not a showboat. I'm not into, you know, the fancy lights. You know, we get to praise God. My goal is discipleship, preparing people, and them, you guys, you, fulfilling your destiny, your purpose in God. Okay, whether you know it, believe it or not, you have a destiny and you have a purpose in life. Okay, what if your purpose is just to what, touch one soul your whole life? Will it be worth it? Yes, because that's one more person that's going to heaven for eternity. So that's how vital your life is. And so uh, so it's just a great privilege to be here at the beginning stages of what God is going to do uh, through this church. Uh, we also want to welcome our wonderful friend from the Paramount Church, Monica. Our Robles, she's back there. And so just a wonderful friend of ours. And so we're blessed to have her here and her family here this morning. And it's a... Uh, it's just great to see friends, man. It's just such a such a fresh aroma, man. It's like, oh, friends, familiarity, <laughs> praise God. And so uh, we just got a couple of announcements. So we do have our prayer meetings Monday night at 730 here in the church. Uh, thank you for those that came out Monday. Uh, we were broadcasting a, a, um, a quick word. And uh, it's, it's, it's great. I believe that thing is growing. And, and a lot of people uh, are viewing it. Uh, Friday night, we have our foundations class at 730. We started our first one. Don't feel like you missed uh, something and you won't catch up. Come on out Friday. Uh, we're still on, on, on uh, unit one. And I'll be doing a refresher and then we'll go into uh, completing the, the first session. Uh, so it's usually about two weeks per session. But we're talking about... Uh, um, uh, what are we talking about? Passion. Passion. Thank you. I got so much. I got so much things going through my mind. But you see, somebody learn something. Praise God. Woo. Praise God. I don't feel that bad now. So we're talking about passion for God. And so you don't want to miss out. Friday night at seven thirty, we invite you to that. And then Saturday morning at eight thirty, we're meeting here again for prayer. And uh, I want to tell you, this church is going to be built on prayer, Amen. not not clubs and societies and uh, all that stuff. Praise that those are after effects of prayer. Okay, I want our church to start off on prayer. Let that be the foundation. So praise God. We're going to take an offering this morning as uh, my wife uh, and uh, I, Sam's going to help her out too. So Sam, go back there with, with, with Linda. And uh, we're going to take an offering this morning. I appreciate everyone that's been giving. And uh, we, we want to be able to uh, uh, continue and to worship God at this building. Uh, that's where our finances go. And then uh, we were blessed. Uh, uh, Brother Alex uh, allowed us to use. We're, we're testing out these 
he lists these speakers. He goes, these are the speakers you want to get, Pastor. And, I mean, the clarity, just the sound alone, it sounds so much better. Okay, so that's going to be our investment into the future. That's what we want to do. And also, uh, our church is going to be a giving church to world missions. Okay, that's our, that's our vision. How many of you know, we can't send international works if we're not investing in so we see internationally. And so that's what our, uh, when your giving comes in, that's where it's going. It's going either to, to, to fund the church uh, or to uh, uh, give to missionaries uh, and, and the world vision that, that, that we have as a whole fellowship. So let's invest. There's several ways to give. You can give online at restorationlifewatchwa.com. You can text to give. If this is your first time texting to give, uh, you text the word give to that phone number. You will get a link back to your phone. Click on that link, uh, and it'll give you instructions on how to put in your banking information. It is uh, uh, private. It is locked, so no one else is going to get your information whatsoever. And it's easy. And it's real easy to get. I, that's my way of my method, man. I just put the money in. Uh, or you can give it through cash or check uh, or uh, credit card through online. Praise God. So praise God. If you need anybody else, just raise your hands and they'll get that to you. Praise God. How many ready for the word of God this morning? Yeah. I feel good. I feel good. I think God's going to do something. You know, I prayed. My, my big prayer is I, when, when we first got here, I prayed for the threshold of the, of the doors. I said, God, when people walk in, let them not walk out the same. Amen. Okay, and so that's what my hope, my prayer, and I've been praying for sick. So if you know anyone that's sick in a wheelchair, whatever it may be, bring them out. I believe God's really, God's really urging me to begin to step out into that arena of faith and watch people get healed by the power of God. So Luke chapter 9, if you have your Bibles with you this morning, Luke chapter 9. I want to continue something I've started, and um, it's called primal, and of most importance. And that, that's what the word primal means, and that's what I ministered to uh, last week. Uh, it's what's most important. Uh, and so the Pharisees asked this question to Jesus, you know, what's the most important commandment? Because uh, they had over 600 laws that they had to obey. And so Jesus said, Love your God with all your might, all your soul, all your strength, and, and, and all your heart. And so he, he said, this is the most important thing, is to love God. Amen. Now, I just want to give you a warning. If I'm a little bit hyper, I just took a five-hour energy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm amped out. I can feel it working right now. So he said, this is the most important. Love God. He said, love God, not 99% of the time, not 99.9999999% of the time, but he said, love God all the time, 100%, with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. He says, with everything in your being, you've got to love God. Amen. So how do we do that? What's the second step? Because how I many know there's people out there that have a passion for their sport? And they love their sport. They are broken hearted, depressed, ready to fight when their team loses. Mm -hmm. There's divorces that have happened because of football games or basketball games. <laughs> There's shootings. That's why we don't go to Oakland, California and watch the Oakland Raiders because they kill people when they lose. <laughs> but how many know that's a passion? And God says, I want you to be passionate about your love for me. And so the only way to do that is by making up your mind. Mm -hmm. I want to look at Luke chapter 9 this morning. Luke chapter 9, just one verse, and then we're going to go on from there. Verse 51. Luke chapter 9, verse 51. It's up here. If you'd like to see it. So you're going to control it until I need to control it, right? You can control okay. it right now if All you right. want. No, no, go in until I need to then. So now it came to pass, when the time had come for him to be received up, that he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. And so here, steadfast means he made up his mind. He says, I know what's ahead there in Jerusalem for me. 
He knew that death was certain. Mm. He knew the type of death that he had to face, which was going to be crucified on the cross. And yet, he made up his mind to go to Jerusalem. He wasn't going to look to the right. He wasn't going to look to the left. He was going to stay focused on his task. He had made up his mind to fulfill the destiny and the des desires and the purpose that God had for his life. There's nothing like the resolve of someone who says, I know what I want, I know why I want it, and I know why I'm going to do it. See, there is power when you make up your mind. That's right. See, here's the first thing that happens when you make up your mind. <laughs> The first way that you and I know that if we made up our mind is you never give up. Amen. That no matter what obstacles come your way, that no matter what uh, 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 attacks come, uh, that you've made up your mind that, that no matter what, uh, you're going to accomplish that that you set your mind to. See, when you make up your mind, you don't quit. Can you imagine a doctor, a doctor going, oh, I don't know if I want to do this. Oh, you know what? Never mind. It's getting too hard. Mm -hmm. They go through 12 plus years just to become a doctor. And then they go another six to eight years for a, for a specialty that they want to be uh, specialized in. Could you imagine? Uh, did you, would you want a doctor that's undecided? <laughs> They go through a lot. They go through a lot to become doctors. But they made up their decision. This is what I want to do. When you and I gave our lives to Jesus, we made a decision not to live for ourselves anymore, but to live for him. And the first sign that I know that I've made up my mind to serve God is that I'm never, ever going to give up. See, I want you to get the context of this this morning. Because inside of books and stories of success are chapters of failure and the story. You read the Bible. How I many know the Bible is full of failures? But it's also full of success. It also shows men that have struggled and fought against opposition to be able to fulfill what God called them to do. There were people going through difficult times, through trials, through problems, through issues, but they kept on pressing on. You know, one life I would never want to live, and God spare me from this, is the life of Job. Mm -hmm. I've never, I'm sorry, I've never had it that bad. Yeah. I've had some stuff happen to it, but my, I cannot compare to Job. Could you imagine losing your kids? Yeah. <clears throat> Could you imagine losing everything? Could you imagine your wife said, just curse God and die? Mm -hmm. Dude, everything is against you. Just end it all. And, but he had made up his mind to serve God no matter what. Amen. See, you could try and try and try. Some might even stop for a while. Maybe you've been trying. Maybe you have issues in your finances. Maybe you've been trying and trying for fixes in your marriage. Maybe you've been trying and trying and praying and praying for a certain healing or a certain blessing and you don't see anything. As a matter of fact, the more you pray, the more opposition seems to come your way. Anybody ever been there? You're praying, you're praying, you're praying, and it's like, God, it's not getting better, it's getting worse. I almost get you to the point where I don't even want to pray anymore.
So you're going to have periods of time where the devil is going to come in and discourage you. Yeah. See, here's the problem. Most people don't believe in the devil. They don't believe in opposition. They don't believe that there's somebody that's out there really trying to discourage you to the point to, to give up. Right. See, whatever you're dealing with, It kind of seems like you want to give up. But in your mind, there's something there where you've already made up your mind not to quit. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you, when your mind's made up, you won't quit. You never quit. Come on, that's right. You might knock me down. I might be just... You know, I might be that one that's crawling up, but I just want to get to the finish line. I just want to cross that line right there. Amen. I'm thinking back. I not in my sermon, but I remember watching. Does anybody know why Gatorade was invented? So it was a, it was a marathon runner, and that, you know, it's 26.2 miles. It's, and it's that .2 miles that kill you. <laughs> <laughs> and so... It was at the, the point one, 26.1 mile, the guy, I mean, the finish line is right there. He can see it. It's right there. Almost where the fire extinguisher, the exit sign is right, right in that area. And, and, and there's video of this. And the guy's legs start wobbling, starts collapsing, and he actually falls down. He can't get up to make it to the finish line. Because he was so dehydrated and all the electrolytes were completely drained out of his life. And, and he starts crawling, trying to get through. And then they kind of, I don't even know if he finished or not. But the, 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 the point I'm trying to get is I don't care if I'm crawling. I don't care what it takes. I, I am resolute. I've made up my mind. I'm getting to the finish line. And Jesus is going to help me get there one way or another. He's not going to give up on me. And it's up to me to make up my mind to say, God, I'm never going to give up on you. No matter what comes my way, I've got my mind made up never to give up on God. Am I too loud? No. Okay. I, I, it's just me. Maybe it's just me. My own mind says, shh, calm down some. <laughs> Something happened here. I was reading an article, and the article was about Maxi Fowler. He's a 60 year old councilman from Compton. It has taken him a third of a century, 48 tries. But he finally passed the California State Bar Exam. Wow. After 48 tries. Now, I don't know if I want him to be my lawyer and represent me. But, <laughs> but I, I, I found his article and I was like, dude, that is resolute. That is not giving up at all. Sorry, guys, something happened here. I lost my sermon. Where did it go? Okay, I'm freaking out here. I really lost my sermon. Never quit. Never quit. Okay, what happened? Take your time. Where's Renee? <laughs> Praise God. Well, we're doing that. I'll, I'll get back to it. I can't find it. But so the power, what happens when you make up your mind is no matter what happens in your life, you're going to get through. Amen. You're going to get through. Mm -hmm. Remember my quote, and I say this a lot, why? Because I want it to become embedded in your mind that I don't live in the circumstances, I live in the outcome. Amen. Okay, yeah, I'm going through some miry clay, I'm going through some trials, some battles, but you know what? This is temporary. How do I know that? 
Because one, I believe in the Bible. I believe in my God. And my God says, they go turn all situations to the good of those that love Jesus. Amen. So I don't get stuck here. The devil wants me to get stuck here, but I don't get stuck here. I am going forward, pressing through, because I know God's going to get me through. I'm living in the outcome. And so we're going to, I want to show a quick video here. I want to move this for a second so that everyone can see. But here's a story of a dad and a son, and he persevered, and towards the end of the video, he's going to, Ask, answer the question why he did what he did. And so let's watch this video real quick. We have it set up. We're not going to put Rick away. I'm going to bring Rick home and bring him up like any other child. We knew Rick was smart. We could tell by looking in his eyes. And when we talked to him, we, you know, he was paying attention to what we were saying. So we wanted to get a computer built so Rick could communicate with us. Everybody came to our house that night for Rick to say his first words. And everybody was betting, you know, what is the first words Rick is ever going to say? His mom saying, it's going to be, hi, mom. And me, the dad, saying, oh, it's going to be, hi, dad. Well, the Boston Bruins were going for the Stanley Cup. And the very first words Rick ever said was, go Bruins. Dick is a military man, so he knows a thing or two about commitment. This time, he's just months removed from a heart attack. This gift that he gives to his son, or is it the other way around? Either way, it all started when Rick heard about a charity run for a paralyzed athlete. He asked Dad, and Dad said yes. The gun went off, and we went off for all the other runners, and everybody thought that Rick and I would just go to the corner and turn around and come back. Well, we didn't. We finished the whole five miles coming in next to last, but not last. And when we got home that night, Rick wrote on his computer, Dad, when I'm running, it feels like my disability disappears. So that was a very powerful message to me that we finally found a sport that Rick could get involved in just like everybody else. powerful, isn't it? Yes. And so this is just uh, uh, some of the stuff. He he actually uh, ran a hundred and a bike ride for uh, 112 miles. Son seated on the back seat of the handlebars. Uh, he would run 26.2 miles. Uh, he did Ironmans in Hawaii with his son. So uh, this was something that just gave him the thrill because of his son. 
And in the all, then they ask them that question, why do you do this? Why do you do this? He goes, because I made up my mind. Amen. And the whole power of this is the power when you make up your mind. And scientists say that us humans use about 10% of our brain. But we are created in the image of God. And I believe that we have remarkable capacity uh, to be able to, uh, uh, to do remarkable things that if we would just make up our minds and be resolute and say, you know what, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to make it. And no matter what I'm going through, I am going to make it. I want to secondly look at the power of decision. Because choices that you and I make is what's going to determine the rest of our lives. How many know the decisions I made yesterday affect my today? And the decisions you make today affect your tomorrow. And so what can help us to get that resolve? What can help me to make up your mind? I picked up this quote from Viktor Frankl at, in A Man's Search for Meaning. He goes, he who has a why to live for can bear almost any how. That's pretty powerful. He's saying when you have a why, why am I doing this? That if your why is big enough, then the obstacles don't matter. No matter what comes your way, it does not matter. I am resolute. I've made up my mind. I have my why, and that why is going to carry me through whatever I'm going through. Amen. See, Linda and I, we had a lot of struggles, uh, but we had our why, and our why was our children. Amen. We said, we don't want our children to go through all the struggles that we went through. We don't want our children to have to experience life and then finally say, you know what, uh, I don't want to live like that. I'd rather live like that. No, we wanted to give them the best that we could and we became the examples that they needed to look at. We made that decision and we were resolute. We never looked back. Amen. No, I've never told myself, man, I missed out on this. I missed out on that because you know what? It was None of that stuff was worth it. Right. My kids were worth it. My kids were everywhere, and we said, this is why we're going to make it. Yeah. If your why is big enough, you can endure the how. Amen. See, if, you're big, if your why is big enough, you'll figure out how. That's right. Yeah. I was reading this book by Charles Hathcock, One Shot, One Kills, a, a, a first United States Marine a sniper. He was the most decorated man uh, during the Vietnam War. Uh, he was the number one sniper for the Marine Corps. He was constantly in harm's way. And he could take someone out at over 2,000 yards in high winds. Doesn't sound too great, does it? But I mean, for the story, it sounds good. He had completed four tours uh, in Vietnam, he was getting ready to go home, and an uh, uh, officer, one of the big generals, called him in and goes, Hey, listen, we are getting ready to redeploy. That means they're getting ready to pull out of Vietnam. And, and, and during a, a war situation, there's two times what's most dangerous for, uh, uh, for us as, as, as fighting soldiers is the first going in. And then, when we're get ready to, get to redeploy out. And so they said that uh, the Viet Cong were, 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 were really, there was this one general that was causing a lot of havoc for our troops. And so they came to him, and they began to explain the scenario to him. They said, we're going to drop you off uh, at night behind enemy lines. Uh, we scouted out, and there's, 2,500 yard field that you're going to have to crawl, crawl through. We figured it's going to take you three days, and at the end of three days, uh, take another day to position yourself for the shot. He says every morning the general comes out and does his, this uh, Tai Chi exercise. And he says, you're going to have to take him out. 
You're going to have to kill him, and it's going to take them so long to reassemble and put their leadership in place uh, that we can move the vast majority of our troops out. Mm -hmm. And we hope uh, to be able to get you out. It's going to take about four to five hours to get out of that bush, launch a balloon, and a plane is going to snatch the balloon and pick you up. I'm like, okay, wait a minute here now. <laughs> Okay, so you're still telling me, okay, I'm going to do all this, and then I'm going to blow up the balloon that's going to pick me up, because you got to remember, this is in the late 60s, early 70s, it's going to take, well, actually in the 70s, it's going to take me up, and the plane's going to come, and, and, and hopefully it, the, the rotors don't cut the rope, uh, so you're going to hope that it's going to catch my rope and take me up, and then you guys are going to go pull me up uh, into the plane, and that's what you're saying. Yep, thank you, John. <laughs> so that's the scenario. And oh, and by the way, there's a team of their snipers in position to take out whatever snipers we send in. Other than that, you shouldn't have a problem. <laughs> so, uh, Gunnery Sergeant Hathcock accepted the mission. He goes in, he gets dropped behind enemy lines. And at 2,500 yards distance he has to travel, he crawls on his belly in full camel. There's snipers looking for him, so he's moving incrementally. That means like inch. If the wind blows, oh, that's my chance to move another inch. Could you imagine how slow he has to move? Slower than a nail is how a snail is how he described it. Now, what they didn't show on the report that this 2,500-yard uh, field was full of fire ants. Oh, so as he's crawling on the, the, as he crawls on his belly four days and four nights, no water, no food, no way to really move, only minuscule incremental uh, paces at a time, he's getting bit by fire ants. His body was completely covered by fire ants as they're eating his skin alive. Welts develops, uh, he starts to go a little goofy. <laughs> he crawls and crawls, and an, a, an interviewer asked him years later, they asked him, how did you stop from going mad? Did you ever think about giving up? He said, I had made up my mind. And I kept telling myself, uh, I made the decision to do this. I made up my mind before I came here. I made the decision to do this, uh, not when they dropped me on the ground. I made the decision before. Before the calamity, before the fire ants, before I was in this experience, before I didn't know what four days without food and water felt like uh, being eaten alive by fire ants. He goes, I made my decision before all this stuff hit me. And I kept thinking, I made up my mind to do this. I made up my mind to do this. Uh, um, and so he kept on going and he, he, he actually uh, uh, was able to snipe out the general. And it's estimated that he saved about 12,000 troops' lives because of what he endured and was able to fulfill his mission. Now, I want to talk to you as a Christian, and I want to talk to you in the urgency of the hour right now. Is that you did not choose God, he chose you. The Bible says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for you. Out of the six or seven billion people around the world, it's no coincidence that he saved you and that you're here this morning. He saved you for a purpose. He saved you for a reason. You might be young. You might think, well, I'm too young. Well, Daniel and Shamrach and Meshach and Abednego, they were all teenagers when they got saved and they started doing great things for God. You might be thinking, well, I'm too old. It was uh, Joshua and Caleb. Caleb was 85 years old uh, when God was saying, you know what? Do you still want this mountain? Do you still want this land? He goes, I'm as strong today as I was 40 years ago. Yes, I want my mountain. Amen. 
And so you're here this morning. Your life means so much more than you even think it's worth right now. Your life is so valuable that God sent his son Jesus to die for you on Calvary's cross. He was resolute. He made a decision to give up his son for you and I. Somewhere in there, you and I need to make a decision and say, God, I'm ready to do what you called me to do. Can I tell you, uh, your life doesn't just depend on you. There are people dependent uh, on your decisions. There are people right now waiting for you uh, to make up your mind and say, God, I'm going to serve you with all my heart, all my might, all my soul, and all my strength. Your family members, uh, there's family members that, that only you can reach, uh, only you can touch, uh, only you can help. That's what salvation is all about. That one person gets saved with the urgency and the desire and begin to see people not for race or color or what they've done, but they begin to see what Jesus sees. He sees them as souls. That these people are going to live in eternity somewhere in heaven or somewhere in hell. There's no other place. There's no in between. And you and I, that if we stay resolute, God will have us begin to connect with these people that he has called, that he has chosen. I'm going to tell you, your life is more important and vital than what you think. You're a world changer, don't even know it. Right. You have destiny, you have purpose. Remember I preached this at a conference. I was telling Pastor, I said, you know what? Before all the calamity, before all the trials and tribulations, before all this, we made a decision to be pastors. Mm-hmm. When we became pastors, I didn't know it was all this stuff. I'm like, oh my gosh, what's the, what, where's all this stuff coming from? But it's something that gets stirred. The devil knows when you make up your mind. Yeah. He knows. And he begins to attack. And he's going to try to do what he can to discourage you to the point uh, that you become ineffective in the spiritual realm. Yeah. Oh, did everybody get that? Yeah. That's right. How many know we can be effective in the world mm-hmm. and become ineffective in the spiritual realm? Yeah. How many know the battle is really won in the spiritual realm? Yeah. True. See, if he can discourage you enough to stop praying... He already has one up on you. Mm-hmm. This thing is not anybody. Mm-hmm. Could you imagine Charles Hathcock, what he did, what he went through? Saved approximately 12,000 troops because he made up his mind. How much more if us as a church uh, make up our mind and say, God, I am resolute. I am going to do this. In the White House, there's a there's a desk for the presence called the Resolute Desk. Yep. Why? Because that's where he makes decisions for the country, for the nation. And they put that bill in front of him, or they put that that whatever they want that paper. And, and before he signs, he got he got to go through this whole scenario in his mind. But it's called a Resolute, the, the the place of decision. Or he's going to make up his mind and sign it and let it become law. And somewhere we have to come to that place of resolute where I make up my mind. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you, there's people counting on people in this place this morning. There's people counting on you. Somewhere we have to come up, Lord, what do you want me to do? And Jesus responds to us in Mark 16, 15, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. And then I take that calling. And I say, I want to go forth in the name of Jesus and work out Mark 16, cast out devils, uh, speak in new tongues, uh, Take up serpents and they will not harm me. And if I 
uh, drink anything deadly. It by no means hurt, hurt me. Uh, and I want to lay hands on the sick and I want to watch them recover. Amen. Amen. See, that's what happens when I make up my mind. We're not here to have church. Uh, we're here to make disciples. Yeah. I, I want to tell you straight up what our vision is. We're not here to build the church. We're here to make disciples. Uh, yes. We're here to prepare hearts uh, for, for the kingdom things. Yeah. We're here to, 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 to prepare couples uh, for, for spiritual things, whether it's here in this city, uh, whether it's in another state, uh, or whether it's in another nation. Uh, my job is not to build a church. Uh, my job is to make disciples. That's what my calling, that's what the Bible says. Go into all the world and make disciples. Amen. And I want to prepare you. I want us to get to the point, church, uh, where we're uh, praying, that we're fired up, uh, we made up our mind, uh, and, and if something's happening in someone's life, we're going to join and link hearts with them and agree with them and help them. Can I tell you, can I, can I tell you what? I, I, I wake up early. I pray for you guys. I pray for you. I start calling out names and praying for people. Pray for you guys. Pray for you guys. Pray for you guys. Pray for you guys. Pray for you. Pray for you. Pray for you guys. Pray for you guys. Pray for Rudy. Pray for you guys. Why? Because I know the battle. Pray for you guys. Pray for the battles that people encounter every day. Every day, I wake up and I pray, God, I bind the battles against uh, the, the strategies of hell against my wife, my kids, and my life. I bind every scheme, every plot, uh, everything that the devil has laid against us right now in Jesus' name. And I pray, remove every obstacle that he has placed in our uh, path. Why? Because he's resolute to take me down, and I'm resolute to, to go forth and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's the way you, so I, I'm hoping that this stirs someone, that you have a real devil aiming at you. He is he has made up his mind to turn against God. Did everybody get me there? Did everybody get that? He has made up his mind. There's no turning back. There's no repentance for him. If you read the Bible, there is no repentance for the devil. He is resolute in his mission. He wants your worship. He wants you to turn away from God. He is resolute. And how much more shall we as Christians get resolute and say, devil, no, you're not going to have this. You're not going to have this. No, I'm not going to fall for that. I am resolute. I'm going to serve Jesus. I want to get to the point that Acts 17, 6, and they drug Jason and some of the brethren out. And they said, these who have turned the world upside down have come here too. Just a couple of men. But they turned the whole city in an uproar. Why? Because they were preaching Jesus. They were preaching the gospel. I want to close with this. It's your time. Perfect timing, John. It's your time. How do I turn this around? How? You know how you turn it around? All it takes is one small victory in your life to see the glory of God. And all of a sudden, you begin to contend a little bit differently. All of a sudden, you begin to fight a little bit differently. See, we need some enthusiasm in the kingdom of God. There's people who need to get excited for Jesus. You know, I don't know where Christians got quiet for. I, don't, I have no idea where this Christianity quietness came from. In the, in, in the book of Acts, when the Holy Ghost came and it began to speak in tongues, uh, the, the Bible says they were loud. It wasn't... In, the, you know, in some corner. No, the Bible says the doors open and they were out in the, in the streets uh, praising God, speaking in tongues. Uh, they were so loud and crazy that the people said they must be drunk. Yeah. Everybody, everybody seen drunk people? Don't they get loud and obnoxious all, all of a sudden like they're deaf? Mm -hmm. And so they feel like they have to speak like four or five times louder? And so that's the way they were. They were preaching. They were declaring and that's the way we need to get out and, and begin to declare and begin to, to, to be enthusiastic about God. Let me know, in close, we need the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah.
need the Holy Spirit so that when the attacks come, it could be like Ephesians 6, 13 through 14. I'm just reading the last part. And having done, having done all to stand. I'm called to stand. I'm called to stand and be an example. I'm called to stand and, and, and make a declaration. Devil, you thought you were going to take me out. You tried to discourage me. You've inflicted me uh, with this or that. You might have caused a little bit of damage. You might even have wounded me. But I went through some valleys. I went through some dark times. But I persevered. I kept pressing through, believing my Jesus. And I want you, I see the mountaintop. And now I'm climbing back up the mountain. Because I know as I'm climbing up the mountain, the glory of the Lord is on top of the mountain. And I want to tell you, we need to keep pressing through and keep going through. I might have gone to the miry clay, but you miscalculated. Devil, you miscalculated. I made up my mind. Not to give up. Yeah. You, 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 you miscalculated that. Uh, where, where, where you left out Isaiah verse 5, chapter 50, verse 7. Uh, For the Lord God will help me. Uh, therefore, I will not be disgraced. Uh, therefore, I have set my face like flint. Uh, and I know that I will not be ashamed. Yeah. I've set my mind uh, I shut my eyes on Jesus, and I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to allow anything to distract me from my purpose and from my destiny. Amen. I want to close with this Edgar A. Guest short poem. It says, you can do as much as you think you can, but you'll never accomplish more. Mm. If you're afraid of yourself, young man, there's little for you in store. For failure comes from the inside first. If there's, if there's, if it's there, if we only knew it, and you can win, though you face the worst, if you feel that you're going to do it. So it comes here. If I know that I'm going to make it here. If I made up my mind, I can do anything. True. And I want to tell you, you can do it. No matter what you're going through, no matter what the, the devil's throwing your way, God has put something in you. And once you make up your mind to say, God, I can do it, there's nothing that the devil can throw your way to dissuade you or stop you, or keep you from accomplishing what God has called you to do. Amen. If I can have every head bowed and every eye closed in reverence to God. Oh, he is so good this morning. Praise God. Even through our complications, we got through this this morning. Praise God. God is good. God is awesome. I'll tell you, he loves you. He cares about you. One thing I've learned in Christianity is that there is no such thing as a coincidence. You're not coincidentally here. You're not here by coincidence. You're here by ordination. God ordained it for you to be here this morning. Why? Because you needed to hear the sermon. You needed to hear this word. I want to tell you, God wants to make you a winner. If you're saved, you are more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. You're more than a conqueror. But if you're here this morning, you're not saved, you can become a conqueror. You can become victorious. I want to tell you, God loves you. God cares about you. And he ordained this day for you to meet him. He ordained for you for this day to have your sins forgiven and to be accepted of the Father. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten Son that whosoever should believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. He ordained it for you to come to this place to get your heart right so that you can know him and the power of his resurrection. He has a purpose 
and he has a destiny for you. And you're here this morning. You're not saved. You're not right with Jesus. You need forgiveness of sins. Can I tell you, this is the first step. The first step to a greater and brighter future is giving your life to Jesus. Would you take that first step this morning? Would you take that first step and say, you know what, that's me. I need Jesus. I need forgiveness of sins. And I want to make heaven my home. Can I tell you, there's no other way to get to heaven except through Jesus. Jesus said, this is Jesus speaking. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. So you're here this morning. You're not saved. You're not right with Jesus. You need salvation. Now, would you lift up your hand? Right up here and run back down. Say, that's Steve. Would you pray for me this morning? Can you lift up your hand. Right up and right back down. Anybody in this place? You need salvation. You need forgiveness of sins. You lift up your hand. You feel something right now pressing at your heart. You feel something right now drawing you. That's the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit right now drawing you. Urging you. Lift up your hand. Make a, make a declaration that you need Jesus. You feel that urgency right now. Lift up your hand. You, 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 you need forgiveness. You need acceptance from God the Father. You lift up your hand. Right up and right back down. Anybody in this place? Praise God. I want to change the other service here then. I want to talk to Christians. I want to tell you, it's so easy to live a non-impactful Christian life. But see, that's not your calling. God is calling you. God has purpose. God has destiny. It starts off by primal. Last week, what I read is to love your God with all your heart, all your might, all your soul, and all your strength. And the second stage is to make up your mind that you're going to serve Jesus no matter what. There's so much depending on your decision. There's so much depending uh, on you uh, allowing the Holy Spirit to guide you uh, and to direct you. And there's something here you need to make uh, that decision. You need to be resolute this morning saying, God, I'm not going to be distracted. God, I'm not going to be this way. I know I have a purpose. I know I have a destiny. Maybe the devil's been coming against you and all hell's been breaking loose in your life. All around you, it says, God, what the heck is going on? Can I tell you? I'll tell you exactly what's going on. There's a real devil out there that is determined. He's made up his mind to discourage you. He, he's made up his mind to do whatever he can to knock you out of the game to make you an ineffective Christian. He has made up his mind. And it's up to Christians to make up their mind and say, you know what, devil? You're not. You're not going to rob me of what God has for my life. You're not going to take away my purpose. You're not going to take away uh, my destiny. You're not going to take away my kids. You're not going to take away my family. You're not going to take away my finances. You're not. I'm, I am not allowing you anymore. I'm going to make a stand. I'm making a stand for Jesus and allow God to use me. He has a purpose. He has a destiny for your life. Remember, don't allow the circumstances of what you're going through right now be the determining factor. I don't live in the circumstance. I live in the outcome. And once you get past through that, you come to the realization of what the scripture says, this too shall pass. As God begins to bless you, as God begins to give you that miracle that you've been pressing and praying for, it's these times right now that make who we really are. Do we really believe? Let's all stand in this place. Uh, maybe God's speaking to you. You need to be resolute. Uh, you've been, you're going through some trials. You're going through some tribulations. Uh, and you just need some If anybody, you want to, you, you need prayer. You make your way up here. Uh, if not, as other Christians, you just begin to pray. Just begin to get a hold of God. Uh, just begin to thank Him for what He's doing in your life. Uh, begin to thank Him what He's doing in your family. Begin to thank Him what He's doing in, the, in, in, in preparing you for the greater purpose that He has in your life. Uh, anybody else? You need prayer. You need uh, hope. Uh, 
You need uh, some resolution. You need some encouragement. Uh, you make your way up here. I want to pray with you. Praise God. Praise God. Anybody else? You make your way up here. You make your way up here. I want to tell you. I just want to, as, as people have their eyes closed, they're slowly praying, get a hold of God. I want to tell you what this altar is. Uh, it's the power of God moving in people's lives. We come up to the altar. Why? Because I'm saying, God, I need you more than ever before. God, I need a move of the Holy Spirit. Uh, God, I'm declaring right now, God, that I want victory. I, I want victory. Anybody else should make your way up here. You need healing. You need healing. You need prayer. You make your way up here. Make your way up here over here on my left side, over here on my right side. I'm going to pray for people that need just some encouragement and the power of God. Anybody else, you make your way up here. Praise God. Praise God. John, if you, John, if you can get my wife to come up, please. Father, I, let's just pray for these this morning. Hallelujah. No, ask Linda. Yeah. Oh, Father, I pray right now, God, in the power of the Holy Spirit, I pray for a couple right now. God, I pray, God, right now for them, God, to become resolute. God, I pray as they make this decision, Father, that you're going to do a powerful and intense thing in their heart and in their mind. God, this couple has destiny. This couple has purpose. I pray, my God, that they will begin to work together for a greater purpose, God. I pray, Lord, that you'll begin to gel together, my God. Lord, your word says, whatever God has joined together, we're believing you, Lord, that as they're linking hearts, uh, God, that they will also link minds, my Lord, and become resolute, uh, God, not just for their daughter, not just for their marriage, uh, but for the purpose and the destiny that you have for their lives, my God, in the name of Jesus. Uh, I am praying right now the Holy Spirit to move. I'm praying the Holy Spirit to stir up and to encourage. God, I bind the powers of darkness that are attacking this couple's lives. Father, I bind every mind battle that they might be experiencing right now. All discouragement I cast down right now by the power in the blood of Jesus. Oh, Father, I release the fruit of the Spirit. I release joy. I release peace. I release love. Long suffering. A sound mind. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God. And I pray that you would move, intervene, and bless this couple. God, I speak blessing. I speak blessing into their lives right now. I speak blessing right now, God. In the name of Jesus, God, I thank you and praise you. 